What can I say? My claim to fame won't come in the shape of hearts and flowers. What will it take? Everything that I know and all the things that I've learned to overcome what's next around each turn. I'll come up and walk in in circles, believing that the things that I love, they will always be perfect and Well your archive of such creatures is very entertaining but the true history on these subjects I have learned are much deeper than you realize. Having studied the subjects of the occult history in my pursuit to be considered for a place in the order of exorcists to help battle against the darker, unseen, forces of evil that plague men's hearts and thoughts to become a force of redemption to those, who have fallen from God's graces. I shall share some of what I have learned along this path. Vampires, many dismiss this creature to be of fiction but the tragic origin of this myth is far from make-believe. I take you back to a tragic era in heavenly history, the second war against heaven. After the exile of the rebel angels there was another, more bloody war that occurred. We are familiar with their classic belief that there was a rebellion against God and Lucifer and his other six comrades were cast from heaven into exile on the third day of creation. However the second war occurred after the flood of Noah's tale. An angel by the name of Uzziel, who had admired the fallen one for his act of standing up against the regime of heaven's self-righteous indignation as he would have called it, had grown tired of serving God and began to feel as if he deserved more that he was underappreciated. His partner in this agreed that something must be done for God had become close-minded to them, acting as if he didn't want to hear anything they had to say. Sarl and Hughes Zeal would speak about the shortcomings that God's efforts seemed to be occurring more and more often, claiming that he was becoming unreliable and that maybe he wasn't able to properly function in his position as God any longer. The other angels would recoil in response to these speeches they would have. In one particular argument the angel Raphael asked. So what are you saying? That we go to war against the Most High? We have seen what happens to those who rise against God. Referencing Lucifer and his rebellion. Use zeal, said, so what are we supposed to do? keep groveling on our knees and worship him day and night like slaves in service to heaven? Why when we could come to earth and rule over man? Raphael replied, so it would be better to rule in exile than to serve in heaven? Raphael walked away and said, forget about that, whatever you're planning use zeal, I will have no part in it. 
Yu's zeal was exiled to earth, as he wanted and became known by his fallen name as Azel and his companion fell as well and became known as Samael. Cast into exile these two angels became notorious for seeking ways to insult God at every turn. Samael became more insolent towards God, mocking him constantly but Hugh's zeal began to harbor feelings of hatred for God. Eventually as Azel incurred God's wrath and frustration and God cursed him to become the Lord of Darkness, only capable of traveling safely at night. This was when his once radiant angelic form became twisted into a creature of the myth from which all vampire legends were born from. His face became like ash, his teeth grew sharp and pointed. His once glorious wings shriveled like the Garden of Eden had and became monstrous bat-like wings and for his thirst to make war against his kingdom he cursed him to crave the blood of the living. With his hatred set into stone he cursed God's name and all he created so in turn God proclaimed him to be the father of sin to which all the evils of man would be attributed to. For the longest time, going from the time of Cain at least until the time of Jesus's crucifixion, the people offered a portion of their sacrifices to feed the bloodlust and be given forgiveness for their sins. Ah, I see, further insight into my curiosity. I was aware, from another credible source on this subject, that mankind and the rebel angels had a truce or kinship between them because of their sacrifice to protect our children after the decree came down to hunt them down and kill them. So I'm seeing a course of events unfolding from here, a path that led to this demiurge god becoming who he is. So after my murder, from behind by Errol, as the chain of events at that time say that he was called to the throne of God around the same time I was and given instruction to find the one Noah's tale was written about and Errol was to instruct him to build a boat and warn him of the coming deluge. However, from what I remember, God was acting, very strangely at that time. When I showed up he looked disheveled, worn out, as if he just finished some great struggle. I brushed it off and asked him why he had called for me. God said he had heard about these children we had with the mortal women. Using his table he watched over his creation with he showed me what his problem was. People were grateful for these hidden heroes among them that came when the time was needed and saved them from great peril, helping them through catastrophes such as volcanic eruptions, storm surges and tidal disasters their heroic hearts to save those who cried out for help and their seemingly supernatural strength and abilities along with their keen insight to the motion of the storm's passage quickly rose them to become legends and men of great reputation among them. The people's hearts gradually began to hold these heroes as cherished names worthy of praise and gratitude and they began to build shrines and statues in thanks to them for their deeds and in the process forgot and began to discard their worship and praise to God, their creator until one day, God would no longer be in their hearts and basically forgotten. This was an egregious sin to him that he would not tolerate. Then he showed me the ending result of their effect on his creation by showing me the rise of the British royal family bloodline of King Henry and his sons, including Richard the Lionheart. He showed me the suffering the people endured the taxation of all they possessed to fuel their family feudal war against each other and against others of their lineage, the French Morovinan kings and monarchs and the evil that conspired in the shadows, unseen. In their time the righteous were the evil of the land and the ones we would all come to call evil were the heroes the people placed their hope upon. This era was the last straw of God's patience with our children for it was their power and will that fueled these conflicts and spread the evil, across the lands in their own version of a family feudal war. However these were things yet to come and I told God that if we were given a chance to raise our children properly with the guidance of wisdom as their fathers then we could teach them how to harness and control their power to be used for the right ways, as it was meant to be used. God though, wouldn't hear any of it. He simply said, that the power they held and their ability to choose what to do with that power was why they could not be allowed to be. That my effort may stop the general lineage from abusing their power but this kind of disaster would only need one to cause the threat that could destroy all he had worked towards, 
just one could use their power to bring about the end of existence in a fit of anger. Then he did, something that caused sorrow to fill my heart in the place where I tried to erect some resemblance of admiration towards my maker. God then decreed that the children were abominations and to be hunted down and killed because of the potential threat they represented. My heart sank for I knew what I had to do. I threw down my sword and my insignia of authority in heaven and said if this is what, heaven has become, slayers of innocent children then I will have no part in it. I renounced my allegiance to heaven and then suddenly from behind there was a sharp, hot, searing pain as a sword came protruding from my chest. As I fell I heard God yelling that my place would no longer be found in heaven and I would be cast out like the unclean thing I have become and everything faded to black. That, was the fall of Lucifer, nothing added or speculations to the possible storyline itself. Here recently God revealed that the reason I fell was because the iniquity of sin was in my heart, which actually meant that my body was still alive and had fallen into a coma, which was weird considering it was an injury people don't walk away from, and aorisms are usually fatal. Funny thing is, I had always, thought he left the ability to praise him out and removed my ability to look upon him with praise because of the issue of my fault to pride one day supposedly, now I know differently. This sorrow in my heart and my inability to remain loyal or to trust in God and what he does comes from the one I share this story with. It was his life's grief when he was a child up until the day he fell into his coma that caused the schism in me. For that I am grateful to this insight that no one has been able to answer until now. I have a question for you though, do you know what will happen when you do finally die? Will you continue on and return to complete me somehow or will you become the vast wisdom that the Son of God spoke from and complete him? No Lucifer, I do not know what will unfold next nor, do I seek to know. There are some things that should not be known. Look what has happened to your name just because of our connection. At this point in my saga, I am he who lived and then died, who rose and lives again forevermore. It is a reference to this whole saga I just explained. Good point. Then you are God, that is the reference to the resurrection, oh, now I think I see, your awakening, from your comatose, that was the resurrection. Yes. As it is mentioned in Revelations, I came to create a new earth and a new heaven and a new Jerusalem, which will begin most likely after I post this, once they are convinced that I knew the old city they sought to rebuild with Jerusalem, in all that time, between you as your fault to become the word that became flesh, as the word was in the beginning and God was with the word and God was in the word for God was the word. Then the word became flesh and died. From the beginning to the death of Jesus, billions of years had passed but where my body lay in a coma only three and a half days had passed before I awoke after they finally, found me. I told you it would all work out in the end. So someone does know, just trust in that. You supposed to be God then? No, I am just a messenger. What is it? We don't talk this way, prophet, you know that. Okay hold on. You are not a messenger sent by him false angel. You have been sent by someone to spy and pry into my works and stand in my way. No wonder I didn't sense his approach. I, usually can sense someone of God's kingdom coming from a distance but I did not sense this one. The church has asked someone of the mystical arts to send this conjuration to me. First they warp me into a poly and now this. What do you mean? I guess the truth should be revealed now. You, Lucifer, only would know about me up to the point when I became you. Twenty-five years have passed since then. In that time, I have been paraded before the world with this bad guy legend they have built in my name, sorry our name, and using it to have the people, especially the faithful, work against everything I do. Convinced I am this evil fallen angel who hates God and seeks all of man's destruction because of it. In our time, long after my time as you, a war was rising, one that could have destroyed the earth if it happened. So in their desperation they decided to manipulate my life and turn it upside down, 
using their ways to influence me towards becoming an unstoppable force they could send against the leader of this rising conflict to stand in his way and defeat him before his desires destroy the world. This time in Lucifer's legends is depicted as the weeping angel, and here is why. They drove me from, my wife, turned her and my friends against me, driving me into solitude so that in my grief and suffering as they tormented me with various methods such as watching my now ex-wife, suffer in her relationship just a few doors away from me. His personality was a mirror image of the man who was my stepfather, abusive, arrogant and a dick basically, hoping to trigger me. They placed a man in there building who was a career criminal who would consistently assault people in the hallway but the police would never arrest or hold him in jail, only showing up when they had to over a two year period. All this hoping they would trigger some heroic side of me that would cause me to commit a crime they could arrest me for and have a valid reason to gain control over my life without anyone, interfering so they could condition me into the weapon they wanted, Apollyon. This song emulates the time in my life. Among all my lovers, there is no one left to comfort me. All my friends have betrayed me and become my enemies. There is no one left to comfort me All my friends have betrayed me And become my enemies I cry myself to sleep each night Tears soak in my pillow No one's left among my lovers Sit and hold my hand Sit and hold my hand I cry myself to sleep each night I cry myself to sleep each night Dear in my pillow Oh God, look at the trouble I'm in Oh God, look at the trouble I'm in But I remember I remember Your love couldn't have run out Your love couldn't have dried up Your love couldn't have run out Your love couldn't have dried up Your love couldn't have run out Your love couldn't have dried up
However instead what happened, in my grief, I became the source behind that which divided the heavens by going back and leading the angels towards knowing the truth that we all have been told was God's wrath upon his creation that instigated the war that divided heaven. I struck back at the ones who manipulated my life into the suffering I endured after becoming the monster they wanted me to be and stopping that conflict as best I could. It worked and I became that immovable mountain to his unstoppable force of conflict but only delayed him long enough for them to ready their defenses for, like I said to Moses when they crossed the Red Seas, I would stand in their way but, I would not kill anyone. Now let us speculate on this. Earl was called back to the throne and the only one listed to have been there at the time but it doesn't list me of course. Could it have been Gilgamesh? the chosen warrior of the light? Could it have been the Demiurge blade that killed me? Looking deeper into Enoch's account there was a listing once, when the fallen angels were condemned to exile from heaven. Earl was judged first, then I was but it never said what happened to the other five fallen angels. And now, perhaps, they shall see what you have become. True war is waged in the hearts of all living things against our own natures, light or dark. The dark side is not a different energy. To use it is only to open yourself to new ways to command that energy that have to do with the hearts of beings. Search your heart. You are the battleground. And if you fall, such a quiet thing, a whisper that shall herald the darkness to come. I'm afraid. I'm afraid it is too late. We carry the dark side within ourselves. Half of life, dark to balance light, waits inside you like an orphan, waiting to be welcomed home. Half the day is night. To see truly, you have to learn to see in the dark. To know the dark side is merely to stop lying. Stop pretending you don't want what you want. Stop pretending you don't fear what you fear. There is a core in you where light shall never touch. at my command power of the dark side power over all you wish to learn the secrets of the dark side I confess that I do You have done well, my friend. His vast wealth, his political influence, immaculate manners, all the pursuits and points of pride to which he has devoted so much of his time and attention over the long, long years of his life, are now chains hung upon his spirit.